What's up, everybody? We are now officially live. Oh my goodness, these comments. These comments are incredible. Woo. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started because there's no way I'm gonna be able to keep up with these comments. <laughs> All right, here we go. Welcome, everybody. This is officially the start of NGPF's live documentary watch party and scholarship night. It's April 30th, 2020, which means it's the last day of April. Um, it's Financial Literacy Month, and that is why we are celebrating tonight with you guys. We're so excited. I, I literally just was like, I spent the first two minutes looking at the chat, and I'm like, there's so many students on here, so many teachers, so many family members, community members. Um, we cannot, literally, we cannot tell you how excited we are to host this event tonight. For those of you who don't recognize me at all, my name is Yaneli Espinal and I work at NextGen Personal Finance. Uh, I work in educational outreach specifically, but I also do a ton of different projects. If you are at a high school that uses NGPF curriculum, you might recognize me from the FinCap Friday e series, which is a current event series that comes out every single week. Um, so if you recognize me from, from the FinCap Fridays, that's awesome. I have my FinCap Friday hat, actually. So let me put that on. And since tonight's event is, look how fresh this hat is. Love it. Ah, okay, I'm going to keep my hat on for a little bit. Since this event is a watch party, we are going to be watching a documentary shortly. I have my popcorn on deck. So if you guys have your popcorn ready to, let us know in the comments if you're ready to start watching we are so hyped. We're so excited to share this event with you guys. Um, and so without further ado, I'm just going to jump in and get started with our agenda today. I'm going to show you what to expect. And uh, so if you didn't know what to expect at all tonight when you joined us, that's okay. Uh, first things first is that you're definitely stuck with me because I'm your host for the rest of the night. And uh, pretty much I'm just going to show you guys what we're going to be doing for the next about an hour or so. I saw some people commenting and asking um, that, you know, they weren't sure how long this was going to take. It's going to be about an hour. So that's how much time you can expect to hang out with us tonight. So here's our agenda. Um, the very first thing that we're going to do is obviously welcome you guys, which I'm doing right now, and just sort of introduce the event. We have um, a special message that we're going to share to open up with. Then we're going to jump into part one of the documentary. And after part one, we're going to give away some scholarship money. Okay, so I know that that's why students are here. Of course, because you advocate and you support personal finance education. You want more financial literacy in school, but also you need some, you know, scholarship money for your own educational pursuits. And so that's why uh, we're excited to get you guys all together tonight so you can win some scholarship money and so you can help us to advocate and use your voice, your social media platform to help us advocate and get more people's attention on the fact that Every student needs to learn personal finance, not only some students, all students. Um, so after part one and the first few scholarships, we're going to go into part two of the documentary, give away more scholarships. Um, and then we got another special message for you guys. After that, we got part three of the documentary with more scholarships, part four, which is the last part of the documentary with some more scholarships. So we'll be giving them out slowly throughout the night. And then at the very end, we're going to do a wrap up and a giveaway. So you definitely want to stick around to the end because your parent and your teacher might win uh, one of the two giveaways that we're going to do at the end. All right, so let's jump in here. Why are we celebrating tonight? And who is NGPF anyway? You guys keep hearing about us. You keep getting emails about this event. You are seeing your teachers using NGPF resources. So who are we? Why are we even doing this tonight? Um, so as I mentioned, tonight is the last day of April, which is Financial Literacy Month. So first of all, happy Financial Literacy Month. It's been a good one because there's so much information out online right now about how finances are so important, especially right now because we're quarantined, because, you know, a lot of people are being more aware of the importance of having, um, you know, your finances in order at home because you can never can predict something like this happening, right, with the coronavirus. You never know when the next economic downturn is going to come. So it's very important that as many people in our country get educated around personal finances. So that's why we're so excited to do our financial literacy event tonight. All right, so who is NGPF? This is NGPF. It is a team of amazing people. I cannot tell you guys enough how 
happy I am, how proud I am to be part of this team of people. I work full time at NGPS and this is the team of amazing people that I get to work with. At the very top on the left, you can see our two co-founders, Tim and Jessica. And then you can see everybody else on the fabulous team that works together to basically create everything that we put together for you guys, including the event tonight, the scholarships that we're giving away and all of the things that we're doing, the documentary, the curriculum that we create and all the good things that we offer teachers so that they can teach you students all about money. Cause you gotta know about money. You guys, this is so important. So now that you've seen our team and you know what we do, we're gonna go ahead and just show you guys real quick uh, a little bit of a sneak peek at our website and what you can find on the NGPF website. So on the NGPF website, we have arcade games, which is one of the most popular things that NGPF offers. You have arcade games that students can play to learn about investing, to learn about budgeting, to learn about all kinds of things related to money. Um, we have quiz games on there too. We have a full curriculum for teachers to be able to teach students about money. So if you're at a school, that does not have any financial classes about money, about budgeting, about savings, then you can tell your teacher, hey, you should be including this in our curriculum. There's a whole website that gives you free curriculum, lesson plans, activities, projects. Did you guys know about this? Present it to your school if, it's, if they aren't already using it or aware of it, because that is one way that you can advocate and support for more financial education. We have resources on here. Again, more activities, the Think Hat Friday episodes, which I just talked about that I put together every week. Um, we have a blog for, uh, you know, just, you know, more information, teacher resources, content out there. Uh, we have podcasts. We have, we put out newsletters. There's so much content that we create all around uh, pushing forward personal finance education. All right. We also do teacher PD trainings. So that includes online professional development training using Zoom, like everybody's on Zoom right now, or Google Meets. So we offer online teacher training, and we also offer in-person training. So after we are all free from this quarantine and we get to go outside again, we will be having teachers come together in person again to learn about our resources. And then finally, advocacy. This is the biggest thing that we're going to focus on tonight, all right? The, the theme for tonight is to be an advocate. So as a student, you're as a parent, as a teacher, whoever you are tuning in tonight, you're going to have a chance to basically become an advocate and speak up and use your voice and your platform to push out this message that we need to fight for every single student in our country to get to learn about money in school so that they don't make money mistakes when they come out of school. OK, so we'll talk more about advocacy and everything like that when we um, when we kind of as we progress through the night and as we start to, to do more. But I know that you guys are curious about how the money is going to work. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to the slideshow and I'm going to show you guys real quick what you need to know to win the money. There's three ways to win big tonight. Okay. The first way is for parents. Parents, you can win a $25 Amazon gift card by posting about this event. If you see your teenager over there watching, or if you're sitting on the couch with your teenager watching, post to Facebook and say, Hey, I'm a parent of a high school student who is very passionate about personal finance education. We're tuning in and, and make sure that you tag NGPF um, and I'll show you all the hashtags and all the tags in a second. But just know that for parents, we wanna direct you to Facebook. And at the end of the night, we're gonna pick a parent to get a $25 Amazon gift card. Then teachers, we wanna push you to go to Twitter. We want teachers to be on Twitter, tweeting about this event, taking pictures of it, tagging us, letting everybody know that you're here tonight and that you are in support of financial literacy and personal finance education, okay? Now, for students, students, this is this is gonna be for you guys, okay? Get your perked up your ears, you know, get the close to the screen. This is, this is for you to win big, okay? This is for the $500 student scholarships. In order to win $500, you are mostly going to be posting to Instagram. Now, if you don't have Instagram, that's okay. We're gonna give you an email option also, but, Primarily in terms of posting to social media, we're going to direct students to Instagram tonight. And that's where we're going to be choosing our winners. Okay. So let's go ahead and move along. I'm going to, now that you guys know the three ways to win, you've seen that, you know, we're asking parents to go to Facebook, teachers to go to Twitter, and students to go uh, to Instagram. I want to show you guys some examples. Okay. I'm going to show you guys uh, what this is going to look like. So here is a potential post that you could put on Facebook. So we have Courtney Paquette, shout out to her. She's out in Vermont 
And shout out to all the students at Winooski High School, who you guys are going to see featured in the documentary soon. Uh, but for Courtney's post on Facebook, you can see she said, did you know that only six states in the U.S. require a full semester of personal finance in high school? All students need and deserve this class. She put a hashtag for NGPF, a hashtag for Mission 2030, which is the big mission of our organization. And she tagged some of the media outlets that she thinks like we want to get their attention. And I'll show you a couple of them coming up too. So she tagged the Today Show, Good Morning America, and she also tagged us at NGPF. So this would be a, the per a perfect example of the type of post that a parent could post on Facebook and that might get them to win that $25 Amazon gift card later tonight, okay? All right, so here's an example for educators. If you are an educator, a teacher, we want you to go to Twitter like Dan did, and we want you to post onto Twitter he said, financial literacy month may be coming to a close, but the push for financial education for all continues. So come join us to make Mission 2030 a reality. Notice he used hashtag Mission 2030. He used hashtag Most Important Class, which is the name of the documentary. He also tagged NextGenPF, and uh, he posted the YouTube link for this event right now. So if somebody's scrolling through Twitter and they want to join us tonight, they can click that link and come right here with us. So these are just some, some really great examples for you guys so that you can see. Now for the students who are tuning in tonight, what is that gonna look like? Again, to win a $500 scholarship, okay? This is not just $25, this is the big bucks. This is for the students to support you in your educational endeavors and to reward you for using your voice and your social media platform tonight to be an advocate, all right, for financial education. So what are you guys gonna do? For round one, we're going to do four rounds and every round is going to have different rules. Okay. So this is for round one. You can see the number one at the bottom of the screen. It's a good idea. If you have your phone out right now to take a picture of this so that you know the rules and you don't forget. Okay. <laughs> Here are going to be the rules, right? The four round one in order to win. And we're going to be giving away two scholarships for the first round. So we're giving away a thousand dollars right off the bat in order to win. You have to post to an Instagram. You have to post a story of you watching this event right now. So the screen that you see in front of you should be in the documentary too. You should have uh, the, the sentence that you see on here. All students deserve a personal finance class in school. And then tag at Today Show and tag at NextGenPF. Bonus points if you tag your high school because if your high school has an Instagram profile, you definitely wanna get your high school's attention and let them know that you participated tonight so you can tag your high school and that will get you some bonus points, okay? If you don't have Instagram, like we mentioned earlier, your job will be to email todaystories at nbcuni.com and CC us at NGPF. You're going to CC us live team at ngpf.org. And you're going to mention this documentary event that you're watching right now. Tell them why you tuned in. Let them know whether or not your high school offers personal finance. And then make sure you put the same message from the top. All students deserve personal finance, not only those in the six states where it's a required class, okay? So this is the message that you want to send to them because we want to make sure we're getting attention on this issue of financial education, okay? You guys, we want to make sure that everybody can see, uh, you know, what, it, what essentially what we're working on. It's very important that, uh, that everybody knows that we're, we're working on a very important mission here. We're trying to make sure that every single kid um, goes to high school and has a financial education class before they graduate, all right? So it's very important that we let them know uh, what that's going to be like, what, what the work is going to look like, what's going on already, okay? So that's why we want you to put it, put this out there and let them know. All right, so now that you've, you've had a couple seconds, I'm going to leave this screen up for about five more seconds. So take a picture of it if you haven't taken a picture already. All right, you got three more seconds. Two more seconds, one more second. All right, I'm going to show you some examples. So here is an example post. Somebody tagged us on Instagram and put the information. They tagged the right people. They even put the little stay home tag on their Instagram story, and they, and they put the picture of them watching tonight, okay? That's going to go to Instagram, all right? We also have an example of an email here. Here is an example of the Today Stories CC live team at NGPF. Here is the message. My name is Yanelli. I'm a high school student in New York City. My school doesn't have financial literacy, but I think it should. And there's that important message. After watching the documentary tonight by NGPF, I learned that only six states have a required personal finance class. That's not okay. You can make the message a bit more personal, but just make sure that you CC us at NGPF so that we can actually see your email or we can see the post, tag us, 
and that way you will be in the running. We're just going to go through all of our mentions tonight, and we're going to go through our email inbox, and we're going to be randomly choosing winners, but we're not going to pick winners that didn't do a good job, okay? Because if we're going to give you guys $500, you got to earn it, all right? We got to gotta hear your passion. You got to be an advocate tonight. Let them know why it's so important that that you're watching this documentary and why the issue of teaching students about money is important to you, okay? All right, so those are all of the, those are the details. That's the information for the first round, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and move into our special message for this evening, which I'm so excited to share with you guys. This, is, this was such a fun message for me to put together. It was so much fun. I'm gonna take my hat off because I'm getting hot. But this was so much fun and I can't wait for you guys to check it out. So I'm going to leave the screen, play the message. And when I come back, we're going to start looking um, for some social media posts and we'll jump into part one of the documentary right after the special message. All right, here we go. I'm Lisa Leslie, four-time Olympic gold medalist, three-time WNBA MVP, two-time WNBA champion and Hall of Famer. And I want to give a huge shout out to NGPF and all that you guys are doing, the students and teachers. Um, I know you guys are celebrating financial literacy this month, which is um, awesome for education and it's very important. And here's the reasons why. A lot of times, some of us are first generation when it even comes to earning money and earning, lear or learning and understanding how to save money and how to invest money. And so I think financial literacy is a, a subject that should be taught in school very early. Um, a little bit more than what we uh, are used to getting because once you start to make money, the importance of investing money, the importance of how you save and having enough money for times like we're in right now with COVID-19. In fact, in fact, statistics show that 80% um, of most households don't even have $400 saved up, um, which makes it really tough when we're in a situation that no one really saw coming, but to be in a pandemic where you can't go to work how much money do you have saved? So the importance of you know personal finances is probably more important right now than ever before in our country and even in the world. So um, thank you to all the teachers and students. Um, continue to um, learn and figure out how you can invest your money and have money in the future. God bless and thank you so much and you guys stay safe. My name is Reggie Jackson, and I have been around the game of baseball and life for a little while. And certainly, I do know, as well as everybody knows, that for all of the students and teachers celebrating Financial Literacy Month in April, that financial education is critical to learn, especially for our youth. Uh, I do remember playing golf with your founder, uh, Tim Ranzetta. Had a great time, great day. Guy's pretty good, too. Anyway, I want to thank you for uh, uh, doing what you're doing for our young people. And just to give you a little shout out there uh, in GPF and all the students and teachers, um, keep it going. It's important what you're doing. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. And I want to send a shout out to NGPF and the students and teachers who are celebrating Financial Literacy Month this April. Getting financially educated is very important because you want to have financial freedom. You want to learn how to invest. You want to learn how to save your money. Uh, you know how hard it is to make it and it's even harder to keep it. So you want to make sure you make the right investments, uh, you know, buy things that appreciate, not depreciate, and really just learn the ropes. It's something I had to do because I came from nothing and now I got a little bit of money. So I got to learn how to make that money last. So, you know, financial education is very important. I think it's something that needs to be taught at an early age. So congratulations to you guys who are teaching it. Good luck to you guys who are learning it. And uh, hey, keep, keep doing good work. Hi guys, I'm Rosa Velma, midfielder for the U.S. Women's National Team, and I think financial education is so important because it's something that's going to help set you up for success for the rest of your life. Um, coming out of college, I honestly knew nothing about finances and how to deal with my money, um, and had I known what I know now, I would have saved a lot more money over the past three or four years and also made a lot more money over the past three or four years through investments. Um, so I would encourage you guys to learn as much as you can now so that when the opportunity presents itself to um, make more money, save money, whatever it may be, you're setting yourself up for the best case scenario and setting your future self up for success as well. 
This is Tim McGee, former NFL player for the Cincinnati Bengals, talking to you today about why financial literacy was so important to me and my family. When I entered the National Football League as a rookie, I totally understood my earning potential during my career must last me maybe even a lifetime. So it was very, very, very important that I had the basic skill set and knowledge to be able to manage the money I made during my NFL career. With the understanding that for every year I played in the National Football League, there was another graduating class that had on their resume skills and experience in the workplace that I didn't have. I played a football game. I played a game. I played a sport. But at the age of 32, I knew and understood that I would be in the workplace. So I wanted to prepare myself to make sure my money was managed the proper and right way for me and my family. So again, it's so important for you to understand you must prepare yourself and preparing yourself is just developing the basic knowledge, understanding and skill set that will carry you through the rest of your life, creating great habits, not good, not average, but great habits and understanding if you make a mistake that you can recover from those mistakes. Again, I'm Tim McGee from the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi, I'm Dr. Tony McCoy, Senior Pastor of Hope International Church and former 10-year NFL veteran. I played eight years with Indianapolis Colts and two years with Arizona Cardinals. I want to give a shout out to NGPF. They asked me to tell you the importance of being financially educated. And I need you to understand, this is huge if you're going to be successful in life. I've had the pleasure of making a lot of money and seeing a lot of my colleagues and former NFL players make huge amounts of money. Money. Some of them made hundreds of thousands of dollars and some of them made hundreds of millions of dollars. But those of them that did not understand financial literacy, some of them, unfortunately, are broke today. You got this. If you put your hand to the plow in learning what money can do and what it can bring in your life, it will always be a blessing to you and those who are around you that you call family. This is Dr. Tony McCoy telling you financial education is very important. God bless. Wow. So as you guys can see, NGPF is not the only organization of people that really fully supports personal finance education and really believes in the mission of, of making sure every student and every person gets financial literacy education. You can tell from all of these amazing uh, athletes and, and the achievements that they have for them to come together and put this special message together for you guys to let you know how important it has been for them and their success in their life is a big deal, okay? All right, so I wanna go ahead and move ahead here. I see a lot of questions in the chat. What are we supposed to be doing? We wanna be in the running for this money. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you guys a quick reminder, all right? And then we're jumping into the documentary. The documentary is gonna start in literally about 30 seconds here, but really quickly, here's the last chance you have. Jump on in here, take a picture of this. This is what you gotta do for round one of the scholarships. We're giving out $1,000 in literally about nine minutes from now, two people are gonna win a $500 scholarship each, okay, on Instagram. So I'm going through the Instagram account right now and I'm seeing Wow, we have over 300 story mentions, which means 300 students have already been posting, which is amazing. Okay, so we're going to be picking two to start in nine minutes. So go ahead and get your, uh, your, your iPads, your phones, your computers ready. All right, here we go. We're jumping in to our documentary, The Most Important Class You Never Had. This presentation was made possible through the support of NextGen Personal Finance. NextGen Personal Finance is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the belief that all students deserve a financial education that is engaging, relevant, and hands-on before leaving high school. 
NextGen provides free resources and professional development workshops to more than 25,000 educators who are equipping more than 2 million students with the knowledge and skills to lead financially successful and fulfilling lives. Will there ever be a day when you wake up where you don't have to think about money? How to make it, how to spend it, how to save it, and yet it's not an important enough topic for the classroom? The lack of personal finance education that we have, particularly in the public school curriculum, is verging on criminal. Kids tell me, I need to know this. I know that the world ahead is going to be complicated and I'm not prepared. It's interesting that we teach students about business and how to handle money for businesses, but we don't teach them how to handle their own money first. It's one of the hottest topics in education right now. It's one of the most vital. We've got to fix this and we've got to fix this now. What's happening in our society is no longer a race issue, but a class issue. The only way that we provide a gateway to financial freedom and financial stability is through financial literacy and financial education. My mom uh, lives with me and she is, her family is from Barbados. My family comes from South Sudan. We immigrated from Thailand. My family is from Bhutan. I'm definitely teaching my parents things about money. In our culture, it's, it's hard to talk about money. When my mom was in high school, she didn't have a class like this. I, I couldn't just ask my parents questions about like banking or finances because my parents hadn't gone through any of that. Since my family didn't talk much about money, um, I actually didn't know anything at all. I didn't even know investing was a thing. I didn't even know financial literacy was a thing at all either. <laughs> Winooski's claim to fame is we are the smallest and most diverse school district in Vermont. Students come from countries all over the world to our school, and we are the only minority-majority school in the state of Vermont. Our school is in a town that's under one square mile, and we have under 800 students in the kindergarten through 12th grade. We focus so much on equity and making sure that every student has the same chance at college and every student has the same chance at a career, but we're not giving students the same chance when it comes to money. So a lot of times students are coming into my class learning and then taking that information home and helping their families too. So that's one thing that students tell me over and over again is thank you now that I have this information, I can explain it to my parents. What do you think students should know and what can they do? This class gives them hope, and this class gives them the ability to make an impact on their families. I want to have a huge list for students to decide between. Things that um, I learned through personal finance and entrepreneurship, I actually use to help my parents with some of the financial questions that they have. I know some things that they don't, and they have more experience than I do, so it's like a mutual like learning thing where we just, we, we just share information and knowledge like that. In personal finance, I learned that you're really only supposed to use like 20% of what you can just so your credit score stays good but my mother was using about like 80 90 so I had a whole conversation with her about how it's better to just be using a smaller amount just so we can build the credit. I can think of so many stories as far as how it's made an impact on students' lives. So I think about some of my students who have gone to a credit union with their parent and helped them understand what they needed to be able to buy a house. So when students look at the cost of renting versus the cost of owning a home in class, that really sets off some, some fireworks for the students. And then they get excited and think, my family could have a home. This is exciting. And so they start researching and they, they make those connections in the community. If money is something you're always going to be using throughout your life. So it's important to learn about it while you're in high school instead of graduating out of college and having no idea. This is kind of stuff that you know you're going to need in your, your life later on in the future. And like you could teach your kids and then it goes on and on. If you want kids who know how to not be in debt, what a credit score is, 
what kind of credit card options there are out there. If you want them to be more knowledgeable, safer with their money, as well as be better spenders, then personal finance is a must. You know, so we spend a lot of time in terms of focusing on the materialism to the point where it becomes almost like a cult where people are concerned about not keeping up with the Joneses, right? Which at the same time, therefore, discourages savings. Personal finance is a 21st century survival skill. There's no skill that's more practical. Uh, there's no class that really would be a greater investment in terms of the return that we would get in the future. Kids making better decisions, kids managing their money well. In order to afford the down payment, how much will Jocelyn need to save for each of the next three years? A young lady was at the uh, grocery store the other day and she was paying with her debit card and the cashier said, you, would you like cash back? And the girl was like, yeah, who wouldn't want cash back, you know? She thought it was like a rebate or she thought it was something like she was the millionth customer and was getting some money rewarded when in reality she was draining her own checking account. Going into the real world, especially as a senior, and having to save for college and starting my own jobs and like realizing that like, wow, you actually have to rely on money instead of like, you know, your parents' money for your whole life. You don't want to leave college and then be in debt and sometimes that debt can follow you for the rest of your adult life. They're all of a sudden realizing that they're faced with these massive numbers that they've never had to wrestle with before. It's an unbelievable wake-up call because they, they are being thrust into making adult decisions with adult sums of money and with adult consequences, and yet they don't feel that they have been prepared. We are constantly being surrounded by things that are constantly telling us, okay, you have to buy this, or you're not going to be cool if you don't own a certain model of a car, if you don't own a cell phone, if you don't have new Gucci slides. After this class, we talked a lot about like instant gratification, and every time I'm about to like buy a coffee or like a t-shirt online, like I definitely think about like the necessity of it, or if it's just that I saw this ad come across my Instagram and I thought it was something cool. There's an awful lot at stake. If we educate our consumers to think about their purchases, then they're not gonna hit that magic one click button on their Amazon. This is somewhat depicting the complete crazy attitude that we have for consumption uh, placed next to the somewhat uh, limited interest that we have in saving our money. My teachers created a curiosity in me. Uh, I see that curiosity in personal finance. I see them get excited. I see that when we, when we change directions in the course from maybe what the, the typical mainstream things that I'm needing to teach them to something more along the lines of personal finance, they spark up, they talk about it, they want to know more, they want to know how they can do it in their personal lives. So much of our lives are centered around where we spend our money, how we get our money, where we save our money. This is really the only class that we're given that's this applicable to real life. If we can give them at least a foundation of an understanding of how to manage their money, how to maybe to save, how to budget, how to sit on purchases, how not to be spontaneous, then I think ultimately uh, that would be a huge gain for their, for their future. All right, you guys. So as you can see, the documentary is amazing because it's telling a lot of different stories. It's telling the stories of students, the stories of teachers, the stories of families, um, and really showing how important financial literacy is in our country and in the lives of every single person in uh, the communities that we're all members of. Um, really quickly before we move forward, I just want to give a huge shout out to the documentarian who created all of the, the documentary clips by going and traveling the country and interviewing people and then putting this documentary together. His name is Bob Jury. He is amazing. Um, thank you so much, Bob Jury, for putting this documentary together. All right. Now that I've said that, I gave a shout out. You've seen the first part of our documentary. It's time to give away some money. So thank you, first of all, for advocating. Just from the emails I'm looking at, we've got almost 100 emails so far just from the emails alone. So I saw a, a lot of comments in the chat box saying that the email isn't working. You have got to make sure you entered it correctly. So I saw people commenting live stream at ngpf.com, 
two mistakes there. One is it is not .com, it's .org because our organization is a nonprofit organization. So you got to make sure it's .org and it's not live stream, it's live team. So the live team tonight that's live, that's checking these emails, wants to see them come through to live team at ngpf.org. So you got to make sure you're typing it correctly. A hundred plus students already got into the email. So I know that it's working and that they followed the instructions correctly. Okay. So just make sure that you're being very careful and looking at the details so that you enter correctly. All right, you guys. So our two winners were chosen from Instagram tonight. Uh, in the next round, all of the emails that were sent so far are going to still be in the running for the next two, uh, for the next three rounds. So continue to use email if you don't have social media. All right. If you see your Instagram handle on the screen tonight, then that means that you are a winner. So here we go. That's what, uh, what, that's what you, uh, this is, uh, I, I already showed it. Okay. This was documentary. First part we just saw it. Here are the winners. Congratulations to, uh, to these winners here of tonight's first round of scholarships. All right. So we've got uh, Dawson underscore J underscore bird and at Naya with a lot of A's and a period and an underscore at the end. So congratulations to you guys. Uh, we're so, so happy that you, uh, that you won. So congratulations. I'm gonna put a little, give it, this is an inside joke for the NGPF team, but every time we're celebrating and we're excited, we do our air horn. So here you go. <laughs> All right. That air horn was for our first two winners. Congratulations. What you're going to do. You're going to check your DMs and you're going to complete the form that we're asking you to complete. That form is going to tell you what you need to do in order to win uh, the, you know, in order to essentially get the funding. You've already won the contest and now you need to essentially fill out the information in the form to prove that you are indeed a student who currently attends high school. And once you do that, uh, then we will confirm that you're a student and you will be able to receive your scholarship dollars. So uh, that is essentially what you got to do. Check your DMs if you're one of the winners on the screen. OK. All right. So we're going to move along here. We got part two of the documentary coming up. So. This is round two of scholarships. We're going to be giving out four scholarships for this round. OK. So what you got to do, post an Instagram story of you watching tonight with the comment. Only six states require a full semester of personal finance for graduation. That's blank. You got you to fill in the blank with your word. How does this make you feel? Maybe that's unfair. Maybe that's ridiculous. Maybe that's not enough. Um, you finish the sentence and use an adjective of your choice or a couple words that you want. Um, to use. And then we're going to have you tag at Good Morning America and at Next Gen PF. Put this in your stories, and this will mean that you're in the running for round two, one of four $500 scholarships, okay? Bonus if you tag your high school, of course. Or if you are not on social media, you don't want to use your Instagram for this, then you can email uh, live team at ngpf.org. And this one's going to be a little tricky. So you got to actually take a picture of your screen after you submit a form at this site, bit.ly forward slash ABC NGPF. That's going to be the form that you're going to submit to Good Morning America, letting them know that you want them to cover this issue. You want them to have more news about the fact that there's not enough financial education in our country. Okay, so you can send them a note saying that you learned tonight that only six states require personal finance for a full semester and that you believe it should be more and you want them to cover this issue, put, this, put attention onto this topic more. So uh, once you fill out that form, you're going to get a confirmation. You send us an email with a screen grab of that confirmation. We see that, and that is your entry for the second round, okay? I'm going to leave this screen up for a few more seconds. So if you have not taken a photo of it, now is the time. Take a picture of it. Make sure that you get the emails correctly. Make sure you get the tags correctly, okay? So you got to make sure that, uh, that you put this up there the correctly, okay? All right, so take, take this, this photo here and then we're going to move forward. If you guys want to just take a, uh, take a quick look at what the examples are, here are some examples. So we've got an Instagram post here on the stories. Only six states require personal finance uh, for graduation. That's unfair. At Next Gen PF, at Good Morning America. That's a quick tag there. You can see he's watching the event. 
at his computer. And then here's the email. So remember, you want to email live team at ngpf.org. You want to send us the confirmation after you submit the form. And just in case you didn't get the picture in time, the bit.ly link for the form is at the bottom of the screen now. So take this picture really quickly if you want to enter via email. Okay. All right. Here we go. We're moving into part two of our documentary tonight. Personal finance is something that I came into just from like making a lot of mistakes and so I learned it myself and then decided to start teaching it back to other people because it's something that I, I think is missing a lot in like the educational space. One of the things that I love about this is that the students, their backgrounds really um, are similar to mine in a lot of ways. My parents immigrated to New York City in like the 70s and late 70s, early 80s, and they uh, didn't know anybody. Dad pretty much just worked like unforgiving jobs, worked his way all the way for a few years to bring my mom over and to bring the rest of the family. So later when I got in the process of applying to college, my parents were like, you're gonna have to talk to your teachers and try to figure it out because we literally just don't have any money to contribute to this. When I was in school, I had to buy my textbooks, I had to buy everything for my dorm room myself, I had to, you know, my food, clothes, anything was coming out of my pocket. I had amassed $20,000 of credit card debt, and I put all of the money that I could every month for my paycheck directly towards that credit card debt. It took me about 18 months to pay it all off. was actually a big reason why I started nerding out around like money topics like I was reading all the personal finance books and like following all the blogs and listening to the podcast that all the financial experts had and I was learning so much so quickly that I was like I want to I want to share it with everybody um and especially like my family yeah. so, um, so you're vegetarian now too Sort of. <laughs> my parents um, slowly saw my interest in personal finance growing. It piqued their curiosity to learn about like how I, how I handle my money. Like I'll start talking to my dad about how stocks work and I, he's all interested in that. And like he's never had anybody talk to him about the stock market in his entire life. Being a low income Hispanic girl from Brooklyn, New York, you don't really often see that story told in, in the personal finance space. I felt like this is the perfect opportunity for me to disrupt this space and say, hey, there are other stories, there are other faces, there are other voices. Hi, I'm Yanelli, also known as Miss Be Helpful. You wanna start investing in the stock market as young as you possibly can. I post videos on my YouTube channel about money, but in a, in a fresh way, I try to just make it sound like conversational. Like if I was at a cafe having a cup of tea with my girlfriend, how would I explain to her that she should be contributing to her employer-sponsored retirement plan without using all those like words? What we do is we provide the material. Then people started asking me to teach what I was posting on videos um, on YouTube in person. And then we're gonna jump into debt. And so then I, I remember I went back to my alma mater to do a workshop for some of the seniors during um, senior week. And that was probably a turning point for me when I realized because after the session was over, it was about an hour and a half long session. And I thought, oh goodness, 90 minutes of talking about this stuff, they're probably done. And at the end, they, they wanted to stay and they, they all lined up to come shake my hand and ask me more questions and talk to me. And I want to take a lot more of my time to devote to this and teaching young people so that they don't make all those mistakes with credit cards that I made. I want to do this all the time. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, let's go to the game. I'm just going to do my freshman year. I have the benefit of actually going backwards and putting in what I actually did do for choices, but some are, weren't even existing. Laptop computers didn't exist when I was a freshman in college, folks. My favorite way to teach is my favorite way to learn, and that's through telling stories. And for me, when the story is true and you can put a name and a face with it, it just makes it more sticky. Kids seem to listen more, they seem to care more. 
I think Mr. Kubini personally does a really good job teaching because he uses a lot of his personal stories and how he's learned, lived his life to explain it to us, what he would have done differently, what he's done well, and I think that's very valuable to have in the classroom to see that real life example rather than just telling us the facts. He always promotes the Roth IRA uh, and how that really sh you should start saving now instead of later. So I've started saving more and you know not even spending the extra few dollars on something so you can put it towards something in the long run better. I did put over a thousand dollars into a Roth IRA to start saving for retirement. I've learned how to calculate a mortgage. I've learned what ways uh, credit card companies try to trap you. It really prepares you for real life. The Finance and Investment Challenge Bowl, a great way to kind of hook kids into having a fun way to learn and show what they've learned in financial literacy and economics courses. The FICB, or Finance and Investment Challenge Bowl, goes back uh, several years um, where a couple of my colleagues got together and said, how can we give educators a hook to make financial education come alive? True or false? And Unsecured loan typically involves We came up with the good old fashioned college bowl kind of buzzers and quiz masters and scoreboards and competition and with fabulous prizes too. This will be their first time experience a state tournament. It is definitely a much more competitive environment than the regional. We're definitely the underdogs coming down there, but uh, we're gonna let them have it full bore. What area of Wisconsin is known for its production? Good, excellent for 10 points. I think it's an honor to be going from such a small town, Rylanders, I think it's 9,000 people, versus these other schools like Madison uh, that have you know hundreds of thousands of people in it. The official score is 180 to Rylander and 145 to Kenosha. That means Rylander has won uh, this round. Great job, first round. They do have another team here today too that beat our other Rhinelander team, so we can maybe pay them back. Great job, first game. Thank you. Nice. No, I have four more to go. Oh, kind of hard. I think I will. Oh, yeah, I Oh, no, so we're playing the other one. Yes, we We, oh. Guys, like, this, this is no bueno. We know. We're gonna win fair and square, don't you worry. I'm a pessimist because of intellect, but an optimist because of will. Which one is Ryan Lander, Lander team one? Your team one and your team two? Okay, all right, got it. <laughs> Define microeconomics. So it's like personal economics as opposed to macroeconomics, which deals with like government. Next question. The tragedy. The tragedy of the commons is a situation where something that 2019, some newly elected members of Congress. So one argument against this is the Laffer curve. Yes. Guys, that is the end of the game. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Hunter, that was a good time. Good job. I'm proud as heck of you to represent our town, our school, the department. I feel the emotion that you feel watching you compete. Honest to God, I get nervous like for you, for me. I'm nervous as heck watching you play. Russell, nice try. Smile! <laughs> three, All right. three. All right. Two, three, 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 three. Students need to know that they need to be the one to focus on their planning for any financial need. A favorite comment of mine in class is no one will ever care more about your money than you will. So the more you can learn about taking care of it, the better off you are. We are about 20 minutes south of Sharonland High School. This is the port of entry into Progreso, Mexico. We share this border like it's, you know, from a town to a town. Um, it, it's very normal and common for our kids to go on the weekends. And like they say, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to Mexico. Like it's, oh, I'm just gonna go to the mall. Parents do know if you go to Sherryland, you are getting an A plus school. So that's what they want. You know, I mean, everybody wants the best thing for their kids. So they will get, you know, like apartments um, and just live two different lives. They live, you know, like during the week in their house that allows them to go to Sherryland. And then in the house uh, on the weekend, they'll go back with their family, you know, like their significant family and extended family and all of that. 
Sherryland High School is, I, I'm gonna say, high 90s Hispanic students sharing my personal stories with the girls in class of, you know, I've been on my own since, you know, 17, 18. I've had to figure it out. It's a lot of sharing uh, my personal stories and helping them understand this may not be what your life looks like, but it is my life, it is relevant, and our lives combined probably don't look like, you know, like the next person over. So it's a lot of just about communication. It's a lot about sharing uh, and listening to them. When I first started, I was a mess. Like, I didn't know how to save money. I would usually like start crying of how like um, worried I was of how I was gonna pay my bills. And like, I didn't really wanna tell my parents because I feel like they would think I was irresponsible. Until you actually step out and figure out how adults have to do all these things in order for them to pay for their house, pay for you know their taxes, pay for the rent and stuff like that, it's, it's a lot. I started taking you know, like the kids to our local grocery store and saying, okay, you know, like we're gonna learn about budgeting, we're gonna learn about nutrition, and then I'm gonna throw you all like chickens with your heads cut off, <laughs> and you know, like try to make a meal uh, for a family of five that has protein, a carb, all of that under fifteen dollars. Each item in the store will have a product tag posted on the shelf below the item. And they're looking at me like that's not possible. So like we did this whole like menu thing, where we like our budget was like a certain amount of money. I learned that I can eat right, eat healthy with like. 30 bucks or something. If we're on a budget though, then we should just stick to the, like, the cheapest. That's the best experience that my kids have had. And since then, and kind of seeing the light bulb moments go off in their heads of, it's possible I can help my family, you know, like with finances while we're eating better, I thought, okay, it's relevant. We need to talk about it. And then I kind of just went to my administration and said, I want to do this class. Let's try. And they said, okay, we'll give you, you know, like one section. And one section has grown into five, six. Um, and it's gotten so big that we this year had to get another teacher part of our department so that we could keep teaching dollars and cents in lifetime nutrition. So we went from zero to a, a good quarter of, of our school. Being in dollars and cents with Ms. Lucero has really made an impact on my own view of money because I always thought of it as, you know, just a simple thing that, you know, comes and goes. It's not necessarily a thing that is needed for everyday life besides what you have in your pocket. It was mostly like getting everything organized from where she helped me so I can see where I have to do my priorities of what I have to spend on. Since we have this class, I learned how to save my mom's money, how to save my own money. And yeah, like it just helped a lot. This class really, it's, it's been a huge impact in my and my mom's life. I found something that I felt um, made the world a better place. And I think through teaching about personal finance and nutrition and mental health and you know, like all of the things that are under the umbrella of family consumer science, that that's my way of giving back. I think they can see my passion for it. And I think they hear my stories through their, their friends and they're like, okay, this is relevant, you know, like, and it's important to us. I am very thankful and lucky that they believed in me enough to let me start this class. All right, you guys, as you can see, I was in the documentary. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's not what you could see. Um, what I want you guys to know is that this documentary is so important because it, it's, it's about real people's lives. And I can tell you that a lot of times you watch things and you're wondering, oh, is this staged? Is this reality TV kind of thing? The documentary is real. I can tell you from personal experience because I was asked to be a part of it to share my personal story. And uh, Bob Jury, his team, the documentary folks came into my home. You guys saw my parents and my house where I grew up with the plastic covered couches, okay? Uh, but the thing is, I, I just wanna point that out because this is really truly a real documentary about real teachers' lives, real people's lives, educators like myself, students. Um, and it's just, it's really trying to make an impact in terms of showing people that when you provide financial education, it can really make waves in a community. It can really change somebody's life, okay? So it changed my life and I had to educate myself. So, you know, I think it's very important if we could get to it before students turn 18. That's what this is all about, all right? So the theme of tonight is be an advocate. So let's go ahead and take a look at who was being an advocate on Instagram while the documentary was playing. We've picked 
four winners. Three came from Instagram and one came from email. Okay. So if you emailed, there were so many emails, it was so hard to choose, but I tried to choose one that was very personal and heartfelt. Um, so here we go. If your name appears on the screen, congratulations, you officially are a winner. So here we go. Here are the four winners. Jason Aguilar, 498, expect an email from us because you were the email winner. Chloe with two E's, 565, Lamar underscore Lee, five, and Addie Warg. <laughs> All right, there you go. So this is uh, essentially the list. If you are on this list, you just won $500. You just have to prove that you are actually a high school student. So check your email tonight, check your DMs, and uh, you will get a form. You'll be asked to share your name first, and then obviously you'll get a form to fill out where you'll give us your information, your details, and that information will help us to prove that you or help you prove that you're a high school student. Once we verify that, you will be getting your scholarship dollars. So congratulations. I see a lot of, uh, oh, so many positive comments. Okay, so I see some positive comments. Congrats, congratulations to the winners. All right, yes, let's keep it positive in the chat. Encourage people. Maybe you're not chosen this time, but hey, we got two more rounds, round three and round four coming up. Keep it positive, and then maybe you will be one of the winners coming up, okay? All right, so thank you so much for the positivity from Mr. Aaron Greberman. Oh, Mr. Greberman, I know him from Philly. Thank you for joining us tonight. So all the fabulous teachers that are joining us tonight, a quick reminder to go to Twitter. Twitter and post about the event. As a teacher, you will be uh, eligible for a $25 Amazon gift card tonight. And parents, so if you're a teenager and you're at home watching this, tell your parents to take a picture of you guys watching this documentary, put it on Facebook, and you could also win a $25, uh, $25 gift card to Amazon as well. All right, so we're moving into our second special message of the night, and then we're continuing with the second half of our event. Please continue to post all throughout this because this will be considered for the next running um, for round three, okay? So round, th round one and round two and round three will all be considered. So you wanna keep posting tonight because you're, you're gonna be eligible for round three and four even as we progress, okay? So just keep on posting. Gather round, students, teachers. <laughs> Yo, next gen. Personal finance, NGPF, Jerry Trainer. you know me as Spencer, what is going on? I'm here to give a shout out to all the students and teachers celebrating Financial Literacy Month this April 2020 while in quarantine lockdown. I'm here in the sunny city of angels going slowly insane, quarantined by myself. <laughs> oh, one day I'll know love. No, I won't. Don't worry about it. I'm good with it. Um, look, you guys, financial education. That's what it's all about. That's what you guys are in for. And it's huge. I always felt when I was taking econ class in high school, I was like, why isn't this more about financial literacy? Like, why is this about like supply and demand? I want to know about like how to balance a checkbook, how to... How does the stock market work? Uh, credit scores, all that stuff. Learning more about my finances was huge for me. Uh, I wish I had learned earlier. I wish I had taken a more active role in it like you guys are doing. Um, so kudos to you students that are, that are taking that initiative. And, and kudos to the teachers who are, you know, hopefully teaching the next generation how to how to do it right, make better decisions. Man, I wish I could go back in time and, and be, one, be one of you guys. Keep going with uh, Financial Literacy Month, and, uh, and I love you guys. Be safe, be well, I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> make it rain! Don't make it rain. Don't make it rain. Put it in your wallet. Save it for a rainy day when someone else is making it rain. Then you have a little something for yourself. Wisdom, you're welcome. Hey guys, I'm Reed Alexander Neville from Nickelodeon's iCarly and a big shout out to NGPF and all the students studying Financial Literacy Month this April 2020. You know, financial education is so important because it means freedom. 
So I wish you good education, happy learning, stay safe and healthy, and make sure to master the basics of financial education because they are lifelong skills that we all need. Take care, everybody. Bye. Hey, what's going on? This is Neo, uh, singer, songwriter, blah, blah, blah. Y'all know who I am. Anyway, this is my quarantine outfit right now. Sorry, no fedoras, no suits. We got on a bathrobe and a beanie. That's how we do it. <laughs> but hey, listen, I wanted to give a shout out to NGPF and all the students and teachers celebrating Financial Literacy Awareness Month in April. Financial education is critical to learn because it does not matter how much money you make if you don't know how to count it, if you don't know how to keep it, okay? So do yourself a favor, get educated with your personal finance, next-gen personal finance. Y'all know what y'all do. It's Neo. Congratulations on everything y'all are doing. Peace and love. How are you? It's Chris Rankin here, Percy Weasley from the Harry Potter films. And I hear that you guys are all celebrating Financial Literacy Month this very month, April which is exciting. And I need to tell you something. Financial education is so important to learn because it's not something that we were taught when I was at school. It's certainly not something you learn about at Hogwarts, I can assure you, but in normal muggle British school, you don't get taught much about financial education at all and financial literacy. If I knew the sort of things that you'd need to know, like when to pay your taxes and how much you should be saving and, you know, mortgages and credit cards and loans and all those kinds of scary, scary things that, quite honestly, are actually vital, then I think I'd have been a lot better off in the long run than I have been. Uh, but listen, guys, I hope you're all well. Take care. Look after your money carefully. Invest it wisely if you must. Um, and yeah, stay safe. Stay well. Hey to all the students at NGPF and all the teachers and students especially celebrating this Financial Literacy Month um, here in April 2020. Oliver Phelps here, or as you may know me with some ginger hair, George Weasley from the Harry Potter films. So I just wanted to get in touch and say, for me, I think that financial education is so important for students because, well, let's face it, it teaches you to budget. It teaches you to plan ahead a bit more, always maybe leaving a bit aside for a rainy day should you ever need it. And that way you can always be prepared because sometimes you need to have some general idea on where it's going. And also, if you're educated in finance, it may lead to a career in that as well, where people are seeking your sound advice to it. So congratulations. Keep going. All the really hard work. All the best. Hi, I'm Alicia Reiner. You may know me as Fig on a little show called Orange is the New Black on Netflix. And I want to send a shout out to NGPF and all the students and teachers celebrating April as Financial Literacy Month. And financial education is so important because you get the chance to learn from other people's mistakes and not make them yourself. So you don't go to prison. Take good care. Hey y'all, I'm Jerry. You may have seen me on a Netflix show, Cheer. And I want to send a big shout out to the Next Gen Personal Finance team and all the students and teachers celebrating Financial Literacy Month tonight. It is so important for teens to learn how to manage money because you need to know where your money is going from, coming from and where it's going. Okay, because you don't want anyone, I mean anyone stealing from you um, because you've worked hard. You worked hard to earn the money that you have, okay? And you need to know how to finance it and you need to know how to set up payment plans if you need to and you need to know how to bank too, okay? So that's why it's very important that you need to know how to manage money, okay? Period. Have a good one, y'all. Hello, everyone. It is Carrie Martin from the Cast of Hentified, aka Ana Morales, and I'm here to give a massive, massive shout out to NGPF and all of the students and teachers who are celebrating Financial Literacy Month tonight. This is incredible. I truly believe that everyone deserves to learn about banking and credit and taxes and investing when they're in school. So let's teach it because knowledge is power. Sending you all the well wishes. Hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. Besos. All right, you guys, you heard it from some of our favorite well-known actors who have done incredible projects who have so many accomplishments and achievements, and they're telling you themselves that it's helped them financially and that they believe in the mission of making sure every single student gets personal finance in high school before they graduate. So it's not just me, it's not just our team at NGPF, it's not just your teachers and you know community members, 
a lot of people out there really believe in this work and this mission. So uh, if you don't believe me, you should, because it's very, very important that you learn about money and you get ahead of this stuff before you go out into the real world and you start making the big paychecks. And then, you know, you make mistakes with money. So it's better off to learn about it before. All right. So that was our special message. Now we're going to jump right into part three of our documentary tonight. So here are the slides to show you what you need to do. Special message is over. And now we're moving into uh, round three. At the bottom of the screen, you can see a number three. That means this is the third round of scholarships. We already gave out two scholarships in round one. We gave out four scholarships in round two. Now we're giving out five more scholarships. So we're going to give out uh, an opportunity for you guys to win some of this money um, in this round. This $2,500 going out. So what you got to do, post an Instagram story. Tag at NextGenPS is awarding $1 million total to, to 100 high schools for making personal finance a required class. So you just got to let folks know about this fact, okay? This is, this is pretty much just a fact about what NGPF is doing. Our organization is making sure that, you know, we, that we support schools who are, uh, you know, in, who, are, you know, who believe in our mission and who are working towards our mission too, okay? So what you want to do, you want to post that, tag at NextGenPF in the comment, tag at time, Okay, make sure you're in the photo and that, you know, you can see the screen that you're watching the documentary tonight. Uh, bonus points if you tag your high school, uh, post this on Instagram. Or if you don't have Instagram, you can email editors at time.com and cc live team at ngpf.org. And then make sure you include this message here. NGPF is awarding a million dollars total to 100 high schools for making personal finance required class all the details are here, and then you want to link them to our website, ngpf.org. Um, if you just put ngpf.org, it's fine, but, you know, we're really looking for someone to put the whole link, ngpf.org forward slash gold standard challenge, because that's where they can find out about the $1 million that our organization is awarding out to schools that make this class required, okay? So you got about five seconds here. Take a picture of this screen so you know how to follow the rules right for round three, Okay. All right, got your picture. And here are some examples in case you're wondering what that might look like. Here's an Instagram story post. Oh, they caught me with my hat on. At NextGenPF is awarding $1 million total. There you go. You see the message and at time. They tagged both NextGenPF and time and even put, <laughs> put true, even put a little sticker, Instagram sticker. I love it. All right, so that's what it looks like. And then here's the email. The email is going to be to editors at time.com, cclivedteam at ngpf.org. All students deserve personal finance. You can see the, the message there that we that we shared. So this is what your email should look like. All right. If you want to take a picture of that, great. And we're moving into part three of our documentary now. Enjoy, you guys. I'm going to grab my popcorn. We are pretty much in the center of the, of the state of Kentucky. Uh, Elizabeth Town is kind of re, uh, referred to as Hub City um, because we're kind of the hub of Kentucky. I'm a business education teacher. Um, the last few years, all I've done is financial literacy. But also, I've coached a lot of different sports, um, basketball for the last 22 years um, since I started. Now, if you remember back in 07, 08, 09, it was some r rough economic times. I just started seeing um, an interest level in kids because I think they were seeing things at home that they had not witnessed before either. In 2008, um, I had a class, a personal finance class of about 20 students. I went to my administrators and said, you know, if, if we had enough students, could I teach another section of this next year? And they said, sure. And uh, we did have enough sign up for a second class. And so from 08, um, where we had 20 students, till last year, where we had 150 students, I really had a realization that if we could duplicate what I was seeing in my classroom um, across the state, we could really make an impact. I didn't know if it could be done. Um, I did know in my heart that we had to try to get it done, that that was the right thing to do. I had two great 
rock star um, legislators. Um, I couldn't ask for two better people. That core group of, um, I had uh, Dennis Parrott, who was a senator uh, that was in my district, and Representative Jim Duplessis. The Senator and I, although we're differing parties, we, we speak a lot, and empowering our kids for financial literacy was something that we very much agreed on. We just had a good round table, several hour discussion about, you know, which, which path do we want to take. But it's really good because we all learn from each other. So we work with the Department of Education. So I filed a bill that those kids would have to have the financial literacy course their junior, senior year. But it got held up by another senator. And uh, so I was not able to get it passed. So I went to Representative Duplessis and said, Jim, take this bill and run with it. He's in a, you're in the majority party, run with it. You, you run into a lot of roadblocks as you're doing legislation. And in order to have successful legislation, you got to get a lot of buy-in from a lot of different groups. The Department of Education was involved, our uh, education commissioner was involved, teachers were involved, lots of people were involved. I knew once that I gave the Representative Duplessis it would pass. I believe that this bill will have more impact on the future of the Commonwealth of Kentucky than most of the bills that we're going to have on this floor this year. You know, it would pass the House of Representatives and then come to the Senate and pass as it did. This is not a political issue. It's not a controversial issue. It's a common sense issue. When you have somebody who can do like Alex did and, and show you the need and what we can do to change that, I, I want to be part of that. And, and Alex and teachers like Alex can do that if they'll you know, build relationships with their legislators. The key thing about the school is this is where we can reach every kid, everyone. And quite honestly, it's the only one. You know, college's uh, financial literacy is great, but not everyone's in college. Once they walk across their graduation stage, they're gone. You know, this is our opportunity right now. For very little time, for really very little money, we can start to have an impact on one of the, to me, one of the biggest areas that we have failed in America it is, is this financial education because it lays a foundation for these young people. At the end of the day, um, the kids of Kentucky won, and it's because of what they did in our legislature. Since 2013, every two years, uh, we've been doing a report card that measures the public policy of every state with regard to what it requires in high school for students to do as a graduation requirement uh, with regard to learning personal financial literacy. And when you look at the, the best of the best, there's only one state that is better than any other state in the country, and it's Utah. One of the things that led to Utah to become a a plus state, the only A plus state in the nation was back in the early 2000s, 2002, 2003, the economy was going well, but we had challenges. We were number one in the nation with bankruptcies, foreclosures were on the rise, a lot of people had credit card debt, and people just were not savvy with their money. The economic downturn was coming. We knew that we needed to start doing some things now. A group of bankers, um, politicians, interested community members gathered together with education officials to talk about the state of financial literacy in our schools. One of our state senators, Pat Jones, uh, proposed this bill to make financial literacy a requirement for graduation. Although some students were getting some of this coursework uh, in CTE courses, we felt like all students should have access and be required to take financial literacy uh, courses in high school. So that collective thought around financial literacy, coupled with a high bankruptcy rate at the time, propelled a legislature to pass a law that would look at financial literacy, and our Board of Education decided to make it a, a graduation requirement. Making that investment into their schools and really ensuring these students come out with the, the skills and knowledge um, really has a big impact, not just for that student, but I think it affects the entire state and the economy. Financial literacy is the one that I think of any subject matter I've ever taught the students, this is the one that is the most life-altering. If I don't follow my budget and I buy a home that costs too much, 
problem is then I can't vacation. Six years ago, I was approached by my principal and asked if I would be interested in teaching financial literacy. My husband and I had been married about 17, 18 years, and our finances were the worst. We were in shambles. We were tens of thousands of dollars in debt. Uh, we had no idea how we were going to help our kids pay for college. The first year teaching financial literacy, I would come home and just mention to my husband, I'd say, you know what we learned? We taught our students, high school kids, how to budget. And I said, what if, you know, what if we just tried this out? And lo and behold, just figuring out where our money was going proved to be probably the most eye-opening thing. We, within two years, had that credit card debt paid off and we, our life, I can't even begin to describe how different life has become. We now have resources to help our kids pay for college. We just go to bed and we sleep. We finally get to sleep at night. For me, it was the best class I could have ever taught. So we have teachers who are talking about, as they were entering into becoming a financial literacy teacher, they were learning and growing along with the students. And that was a subsidiary benefit that we didn't anticipate, really this generation of teachers who were better financially prepared along with their students. My satisfaction in being a teacher 27 years in is beyond what I can comprehend. I love, absolutely, I'm passionate about what I do and financial literacy was a new topic that brought so much renewed energy and happiness to what I teach. So if I can do anything to get another teacher excited and on board about teaching financial literacy, then I feel like that's a win, just a bigger win for me because everything about the subject changes lives, alters lives for the better. As you saw, it doesn't just affect students. It can affect teachers' lives too. There's so many teachers that when they were in school, they never learned about personal finance. They never had a financial literacy class. So it's really important that we recognize this is not just for the students. It can change teachers' lives. It can change you know, administration at the school, staff. So it's very powerful stuff, okay? Get behind financial education. And thank you to every single student, teacher, parent, and community member tonight who's used their social media platform to be an advocate to push for financial education for all students. It's just not fair that only six states have a required personal finance class when all 50 states need this and deserve this, okay? So thank you for joining the cause tonight and using your voice as an advocate. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at our winners because I know that you guys are curious. So if your name popped up on the screen, again, there were uh, winners from email who came in via email. And there were also, uh, I think we chose, we, so we chose one from the email and the other ones are from, uh, from our Instagram. So we're just grabbing all the winners now. Ah. All right, the final two winners are being picked. Thank you guys for your patience. All right. And if your name pops up or your Instagram name pops up on the screen right now, then you uh, can expect a DM to come from somebody from our MGPF team. Uh, and if your email shows up, then you can expect an email tonight with the form that you have to complete in order to prove that you're a student, all right, and to claim your prize. So here we go. Here are our five winners. We have Jay Henshaw 131. You won via email, so check your email tonight. EMarch20 on Instagram, mahogany.love on Instagram, Jalen Pointer, and Andrew underscore Rango15. These are our winners. <laughs> Congratulations to these winners. Uh, that You are going to get $500 in a student scholarship. You can put that money towards any educational endeavor uh, that you, um, you know, that you had planned for yourself to further your education um, and to improve yourself, okay, professionally, personally, to build uh, your educational um, knowledge, okay? So 
We're going to go ahead and move along because we're running a little late tonight and I want to wrap this up. I want to get more scholarships awarded tonight. So for round four, this is the final round of scholarships that we are giving out tonight, okay? You are going to take a picture of the screen real quick if you want to get the, uh, the details, the rules um, on your phone so you do this correctly, okay? Post an Instagram story of you watching tonight live with Financial Literacy Month this April was not canceled at NextGenPF, just hosted a YouTube live party and awarded $10,000 in scholarships, okay? When you post this, you're going to tag at John Krasinski, who is the host of at Some Good News. So this one is tricky because it got th it's got three tags, okay? At NextGenPF, at John Krasinski, and at Some Good News, all right? That's for Instagram. And of course, bonus points if you tag your high school. But uh, if you don't have Instagram, you can email. So uh, what we're doing right now is all of the three first round, first three rounds that were submitted via email, all of those emails are going to be looked at again for round four. So if you've already emailed tonight, sit tight, grab your popcorn, you're good to go. You're already eligible. You've already submitted your, uh, your submission for round four, okay? So here are some examples of what that could look like. There's the post, the Instagram story. Uh, there's, you know, watching the documentary. And uh, there's the comment tagged at John Krasinski, tagged at Some Good News. And here's what uh, the documentary is going gonna, is gonna to look. Well, here's the, the trailer for the documentary, what the image looks like. So we're going to go ahead and play this last part here. Um, and real quick, if you guys missed that, here are the instructions for the final round of, of scholarships tonight. Okay, these are $500 scholarships going directly to high school students. The City of School is located in the West Village of, of, of Manhattan. It's an eclectic mix of artists, business people, and entrepreneurs. The reason why we're called City of School, because City of School, we, the city is our school, is our classroom. Good afternoon. Hey, hey. So one of the activities that we're going to do today is called Create a Mutual Fund, a company that you're going to be representing. City High School is an alternative high school um, that mixes both a traditional education and um, internship opportunities in areas that uh, we students are interested in. A uh, big part of what we do here is internships and students going out and earning credits. MJCon is a third generation run fabrication and textile company. I uh, cut out fabric swatches and create swatch templates for some of like the biggest fashion brands in New York City. This feeds into personal finance education for me because uh, I'm running my own brand. Having that knowledge and that background influences a lot of my financial decisions with my brand. So you have to have some sort of financial literacy to make sure that uh, your company doesn't go into the red. We believe in experiential learning, learning by doing. Kids get a chance to really dive in so they get a, a richness of learning that, which doesn't happen in a lot of traditional schools. He taught me a lot about um, you know, just financial pitfalls, making sure that you're staying on top of your finances, your bookkeeping, build a career set for yourself, and then from those careers comes money, and you have to learn how to manage that money so that you can live your life the way that you want. First of all, stand up. Find somebody that's got a company that might be similar to yours. 25? 21. Okay, so it lowered your, what about you guys? Who did it raise? Most of our students don't have that kind of education, just like I didn't have it, and they're not getting it at home for the most part. A young mother who had a kid who was living in halfway homes. She had taken a checking and savings class that I had. She was soaking up like a sponge and she would save her little money and then she came back six to nine months later, you know, excited that she was able to get a little room. It wasn't a big place, but a little room for her and her daughter to stay. And that's when I knew the power of this, this type of uh, education.
and how it, how it can impact students. I've taken three of Tony's classes. My whole idea of like responsibility in adulthood has completely changed. I always say, everybody's trying to get in your pocket. It's your, it's your duty to guard it. If we could get this wave of personal finance that's building with the Tonys of the country, if we could build that to cover the whole country, imagine how much better off the next generation of young people would be. In this two year period, from November 2017 to now, I have never seen so many states making positive movements. Something's happening right now. Wisconsin has been on the bandwagon big time. More and more school districts jumping on board to that number. It's growing exponentially. The wave of enthusiasm, just the idea that I'm followed down the hall and kids stay after class because they want to know more about this. This class gives them hope and this class gives them the ability to make an impact on their families. So you'll have certain kids that are just like, first time that they're ever having these conversations. We're communicating about things that were once taboo. It's not something that should be admonished. It's not something that should be you know, like in secret. Everybody has money and let's talk about it. I start to hear a lot of comments of, oh my gosh, I love this. I 100% think that all high school students should take this course because I don't, I don't know how someone could be successful without knowing how to manage their money. With personal finance, you take everything that happens in the real world and you bring it into the classroom. These little skills right now that don't seem like they're so fundamental in the long run will really help you out and allow you to live uh, your life the way that you, you want to live it. Everyone is going to deal with money in some way and everyone is going to need to know that information. So the earlier you start, the better off you'll be. I would get comments from parents like, you know, this is the class I wish I'd had in high school. And I'm thinking, yeah, me too. It should be mandatory that uh, that person finance be taught in every high school. Simply because that's the one thing that everyone that goes to school has in common, is you're going to have to learn how to manage your money. Next Gen Personal Finance and the nationwide community of personal finance educators are committed to Mission 2030, a goal that by 2030, all high school students will take a one semester personal finance course before they graduate. Please visit ngpf.org to lend your support and to bring personal finance education to the schools in your community. Find free resources and professional development workshops to get you started. Check out the advocacy section on the NGPF website for tools that you can use to make the case for personal finance education. The next generation is counting on you. All right, you guys, so here we go. We are gonna share our final winners for round four here. We're choosing six winners. So if your name comes up on the screen, then you're a winner tonight. We got Tundi YY, check your email. Jackie SP Chan, check your email. On Instagram, we got Fatima underscore Ibrahim, Gabby S Glam Room or Gabby Glam Room. We got underscore H-E-Z-E -E, and at Queen BG underscore 21. Those are our winners for round four. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. So if you are a winner, I'll repeat tonight, you are going to get a form sent to you. We're going to ask you for your details once you get the form. You will have to complete that form to prove and verify that you are actually in high school. You'll need to send it to a teacher to get it verified. So look out tonight for that DM on Instagram or that email that's going to be sent to you with a link to that form. Okay. Congratulations to all the winners so far. Okay. We still got some more winners coming up. So, so far we have all of the winners who have won that uh, watch the documentary tonight that were active on social media tonight. And we also said we were going to award teachers uh, for posting and family members for posting as well. So we're going to go ahead and share those. Now, these awards are not uh, going to be awards that you would, you know, see a, a student get because <laughs> the students are getting scholarship money. We want the students to, to, you know, to have the awards that are going to help them to succeed in college, to succeed in high school and beyond in their educational pursuits. So we're awarding $25 Amazon gift cards to teachers 
who uh, have been active on, or to a teacher who's been active on Twitter, and also to a parent who has been active on Facebook. So I'm also gonna share those. And if that is your name that you see on the screen, then you gotta check your Instagram, check or check your uh, Facebook and check your Twitter to see if you are a winner. So here we go. Giveaway winners, you just won a $25 Amazon gift card on Facebook, LDE or LDP, and on Twitter. Congratulations to Lori Gardner. So congratulations to you all for, for posting, for sharing, for being an active advocate tonight. That was our big theme this evening, okay? It was all about advocacy, using your voice, okay? So for those of you who are like, what is advocacy? She keeps saying the word advocate, okay? <laughs> being an advocate means that you use your voice to tell people uh, what they need to do, okay? Or what you want to see them do to improve um, the lives of the people in your community, to improve your life, to make things better, okay? So we know that financial education helps make people's lives better, okay? So what we're gonna ask you guys to do as, as we wrap up tonight, two things that I wanna share. One is to continue to be an advocate in two ways. We're gonna, we've chosen 17 student winners tonight, which means there's three $500 awards that are still floating. I see people in the comments saying, that's only 17 winners, what about the other three? Those are still floating. So we're gonna continue to award student awards. What we're gonna ask you to do is leave your Instagram stories that you posted tonight, leave those up because stories last 24 hours, hello, so they're not gonna go away. We're gonna go through all those Instagram stories because we need a little more time. We wanna pick good ones and it's already getting a little late. So we're gonna announce them in 24 hours. So tomorrow you're gonna find out the last three winners. Where are you gonna be able to go find out if you won? Well, if you're a winner, you're gonna get a DM from us, but also you can go to the ngpf.org website and you can check our blog, okay? We're gonna go to uh, the blog here and we're gonna post the blog tomorrow congratulating all of the winners from the event tonight, okay? That includes all of the emails who were submitted if you won all of the student winners on Instagram, the parent on Facebook and the teacher on Twitter. And we're also going to announce the three winners who were selected in the next 24 hours. So the winners who are still, who have not yet uh, been announced are gonna be announced on the blog. So you're gonna go to ngpf.org, go to community and go to blog. And here's our blog, there's gonna be a post on here tomorrow. And then the last thing is to continue to be an advocate beyond just the social media stuff. So you can do that by going to our advocacy tab on our website and going to where it says most important class film, which you have already watched. You've seen the film tonight. So what's next? What's next after you watch the film? That's it, you kick up your feet, you're done. My popcorn is done, that's it, I'm done. No, you're not done. The work has just begun. You wanna to continue to use your voice and to be an advocate. So you can do that by creating a petition at your school, circulating that to other students and saying, hey, let's all come together and demand this class because it's gonna help us so much to prepare ourselves for life after high school, right? So we need this class. So you can create a petition and as an educator you can, or a parent, you can advocate locally, okay? So either way, whatever you choose to do, the, the information that you need is on this page here. So you just go to the advocacy tab, click on most important class film. You can create a petition. Here's, a, we've got templates for you. Advocate locally what you can do right now when the documentary is over or when this event is over. And if you scroll down, you have access to the documentary in full. So if you wanna share that with other people and let them know, about these inspiring stories of educators and students whose lives are being changed for the better because they're learning about money, okay? You could definitely share that just by sharing the link right here. Thank you all so much for participating tonight, for entering the contest for uh, your scholarship award, also for using your voice. Again, this is what this was all about, for using your voice as an advocate. Um, and we, you know, we see you, your commitment, your effort in school. We know it's tough right now that we're in quarantine, but you know, just be active on your Google Classrooms, be active in Schoology and Canvas, you know, wherever your teachers are sharing materials with you, be active in there, okay? Because I know that there's tons of students in the comments that said, I would never have known about this event tonight if I didn't check Google Classroom. Your teachers want what's best for you. So pay attention to those online classrooms, show up to virtual class, turn on your camera. I've been in so many virtual classrooms as a guest speaker and I see students not turning on their camera. We wanna see your face. We wanna see what you're up to. We wanna see if you're comfortable sharing, share it. Turn on that camera, let them know that you're here, you're tuned in, you care about your education and you care about your future, just like your educators and your parents and your family and your community does care as well, right? So we hope you guys have a good night. Quick reminder to leave all of your posts up for 24 hours. We're gonna be looking through our emails that we've gotten and through social media to choose three more winners in the next 24 hours, okay? So come back to our blog tomorrow. Thank you all so much and have a great night.